Hi everyone and welcome to a Wargame Red Dragon deck building slash adjustment video. Let me take you back in time to yesterday. I've been talking a long time about building a type deck or several type decks. And something that I always come back to is airborne. Because I like airplanes. I do like using my jets in games and I also like using my infantry. And on occasion I do love to use helicopters but I don't use them very often. I've been trying to practice with the moors you would have seen in previous games. But one of the big things that I always feel I'm missing is strong aircraft. And also a deck where I can rush forward with infantry and helicopters. And the other option for that I suppose is probably marines. But I decided to go with airborne so I get the nice mix of everything. Obviously this is designed for 10v10s. It is missing things that I would usually have in my decks. My decks, generally speaking, will always have heavy armor because I build general decks. I like to be flexible and have the ability to do everything and fill a gap where my allies might not be, you know, capable of doing that role. Not necessarily because they're bad players, but just because they don't have the deck or they don't have the confidence to do it. A good example of that is Foxtrot on Mudfight, you know, where you have to have a tank and you have to smoke it and things like that. I'm not great at it. I have bad days and good days. But some people just will not touch that with a barge pole, which is fair enough. So this is me relying completely on other members of the team and just focusing on a couple of small areas, okay? So I built the deck and I tried it out and I'm going to make some adjustments based on what I did in that game or those games. So let's just have a quick look at logistics and get that out of the way. So I've got my fob, fair enough. I've got cargo and cargo again. The reason for that is I can imagine using this deck on Once on Harbour and I'm not a big fan of Once on Harbour but if I'm going to be using a deck with a lot of infantry, then I'm on once on harbour. I also know I'm going to need a lot of trucks to keep rearming and repairing them. Resupply, resupply, resupply. So that's why there's two of those there. That there is a deliberate reason in my head that I have two decks of those, or two stacks. This is where I'm not convinced I did the right thing. I took a command helicopter, thinking to myself, I can rush out and cap a point before anyone else gets there. Well, not a command helicopter, I should say. A command infantry in a helicopter. What I have since realized is that while it's handy in some situations, in the games I played, which in fairness, I think all but one were on mud fight, this pretty much just died in the base because I think unless you're on a particular map, you're not going to be rushing out to cap a point ahead of anything else. You want to be careful with your command vehicles. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to switch to these guys in the URL. And you only get three, but for 10v10s, I'm not going to be bringing in more than three. So yeah, the reason for that is I want them to come in behind my other units. I don't want them in the front. That was just a mistake. So, big no one on that. I mean, you could go with the UAZ. The reason I like the infantry is because I can stick them in a building or something. And then the Ammo 26. Again, there are certain situations I will use that. If I have a secure forward position, I might bring that in to rearm helicopters. I might bring that in to rearm troops in a forest if I can park just behind it. However, it might end up coming out and I put something else in. The reason for that is I don't use them that often. But the moment I take it out, I know I'm going to need it, which is very typical of me. But let's move on. Infantry. Now, <laughs> there will be a lot of debate on this one. I'm going to delete all of these and we're going to start again. The reason for that is just because... I want to 
jiggle things around a little bit. So first is VDVs. Need VDVs. Bring some in the BMD3 without question. Now I had elites and I didn't feel that they were much better than just taking veterans of which you can get more of. But how many am I actually going to bring in in a game is the big question. In a 10v10, probably not that many. So maybe the nine elites is enough. And until I run out of them, I'll stick with that. Then I'd still like some more VDVs because they're very good infantry. And I suppose bringing them in the BTRD is the next best option. So there we go, plenty of ground infantry, fulfilling forests and things like that. They're not too expensive. Then Spetsnaz. I mean, again, you can't really go wrong with Spetsnaz. And then you've got to sort of make a decision what you're bringing in when it comes to Spetsnaz. You can't have them with a BMD, sadly. These guys with a BMD would be awesome because then you'd have some anti-armor of some description, you know? The BMD-1P, anything like that, the BMD-2, the BMD-3. Any of those would be fantastic for the Spetsnaz. Your options here are the BTRD, which has your quad machine gun, which is good. The robot, which does have a missile on it. But is it worth the extra 10 points? And then you have the anti-air. And then you've got the option of choppers. Now, I think it's really difficult with choppers. They're expensive. Choppers are expensive. And there are, they have a good variety of choppers that they can come in, but they're all, you know, the cheapest one there. The Mi-8T, 25 points, 30 points for a machine gun, a machine gun and big rockets. 24A has anti-tank and the D has anti-tank. I'm really not sure. I'm tempted to bring them in in a little minigun vehicle and they only come in elite. So there we go. So there, I've got good ground forces, anti-infantry. Then we need to think about conquers. Now, you're going to be a Conker's M, without shadow of a doubt, it's always going to be the case. And then you've got to decide what you bring them in with, and those are very good, those are very good. I think for me, that's the better option, because then you've got some anti-air for them. Benefits, Veteran versus Hardened. There's a bit of a benefit, but they've got good accuracy anyway. I'd got hardened, just in case you're going to be bringing more in. In a long game, they might be getting slaughtered on the front line. And then, certainly anti-air. See, so IGLA ends. Always IGLA ends. You don't want to bother with the Strella 3s. They are terrible. You've also got the other IGLAs, if you want to bring in a second squad. Now, my big thing, which I hadn't done when I first built this deck was particularly planned for rushing a town. For example, Mudfight. There is a town you can rush and fill with infantry. Just next to Anna. So I want to take these guys in a chopper. But it makes them expensive. And then you've got to decide what you're going to take. I mean... 122 millimeter rockets versus 57 millimeter. For the extra five points, I don't know much about those rockets. I've never really used them much. I feel like they'll do a lot of damage. Let's do that. Let's go hardened. Probably regret it later. And then for units that go forward, I suppose I wouldn't often use them, but the Gone Astralki are probably pretty good at this because they act as both an infantry group for combat 
and anti-tank. Now, their range isn't great. But if they're in a town, most of the time something's going to have to get close enough to them so they can fire, you know, before they get seen. And again, you're going to bring them in in a chopper of some description. I suppose you might as well bring them in the same. And for these guys, again, they have a reasonably good accuracy. So you can probably just bring Hardened. And then the question is, do you bring Conkers in the chopper to back them up? And do you consider getting Sapri 85 so you get those Napalm rounds as well? They're cheaper than the Spetsnaz, obviously. But there's only a strength of five, which always puts me off them. I've got to be honest. I mean, you could change that out, bring VDBs and take Conkers as well. I'm torn now. Do I get VDVs in something else? Do I get them in a chopper? I'm tempted to take the VDVs. I mean, you could take them in that so they have anti-air with them as well. That would give me a good selection, but I feel like I should take them in a chopper. Do I take them in a cheap chopper just so that they're as cheap as possible? To do that, so then at least you're getting something that can get up there and back up these guys. And then... Do the same with Conkers, have some in the chopper. There's no reason not to take them in the cheapest chopper as well. We can go with Hardened again. And then we've got one point left. And do you just be annoying and take some IGLA guys in a BTRD just to provide harassment effectively in the forest? I mean, that's the sort of thing that you could line up in the forest in mud fight and just be annoying you don't have to kill anything at 15 points and 5 points roll up the BTRDs to the front lines to support the other troops because of their quad cannons or quad machine guns you could go veteran with those no why would you go veteran take as many as possible do that there you go it's, it's a little bit of trial and error with this deck and then support. There's not a lot to choose from, as you can see. The grad is an option. Uh, I have such mixed feelings about multiple rocket launchers like this. They have their little advantages, perhaps for causing an immense amount of panic ahead of you. I'm taking two sets of Strathers because it's all you have. I wouldn't bother with the standard basic Strathers. I'd get the Strathers 10 Ms. Um, because they're better in every way. The Nona's, I did have the Hardened, but I'm just going to take the Trained. I don't think there's enough of a bonus for taking Hardened and getting one less. You can take the URL with the uh, anti-air cannon, but I, I don't really think that's worth it. I'm going to stick the Grad in. I'm going to take Hardened, because to some extent the bonus accuracy will help with those guys and leave it at that. I'm going to test that on assaulting a position. So if I'm pushing my infantry forward, then I hit with that first so that it hopefully panics enemy infantry. Tanks, you have no choices here. This is where you're relying on other people. You're going to take one thing here. You take the BMP 685. It gives you a cannon and it gives you a tiny bit of front armor. It's better than nothing. Recon, now, this is where you can play around a lot. K52 is probably a must, but you're gonna have to learn to play carefully with it. Cause if you're going to go helicopters and recon, then you're gonna be focusing on that, especially in 10v10 with, you know, a tactical 10v10 with low points, you're going to need to be very careful with it. But two of those, hardened. They're my two. It's a recon chopper. Don't need to say anymore. Now I've taken these guys because 
in my head they were cheap, but actually I decided to get rid of them. So I kind of want to take this better than screw because they're better all round units. They cost twice as much, but they're just better. And your choice here is what to drop them off with. I mean, whatever you bring them in with, they're going to be expensive. But these guys are very strong. And you're giving them a gunship to support them. And I think four veterans of those is more than enough. I um and are about this, because I don't bring them in that much. And often I get them shot down because I'm not watching them. So I'm actually going to delete that chopper. If I'm going to bring one in, I'll bring in a KF-52. I'm sure there'll be a lot of debate about that. People quite often prefer the cheap option. But if I bring that in, I'm going to babysit it and it's not going to die easily. That's the difference. I want to take another squad of infantry. It's probably going to be the other Spetsnaz. And I'm just going to take them in, in the cheapest option. Which does have a minigun on it. Nothing wrong with that. But it's the cheapest option. I take veterans of those. I mean, they're not going to be firing. The gunship, yes, you can use that later in the day. No problem. But these guys aren't going to be firing. They're just going to be stood somewhere. Peering at the enemy. And then I was thinking about taking a vehicle. And I've decided I'm going to take the BRDM-3. Because it's got a nice auto cannon on there. And we'll just take Hardened. Because we'll, I don't think we'll be churning through that many. And it'll provide a, a little bit of defense near the front lines. And support the infantry. Or you can use it for defending a base in terms of your main base to stop them getting in from behind, or you can use it to help defend a command vehicle or a command infantry. It's got a bit of versatility. Vehicles, Zahalo, without question, is the one you're gonna take here. It's providing you another cannon, of which you don't have many. With a little bit of AP power, yes, it's not going to take out a tank, but it's gonna take out a small vehicle, and they're pretty fast. They just don't have any armor themselves, so they're going to die quickly. I took the Conkers there, but I regret that, so I'm getting rid of it. I will never. I, I rarely call these things in. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I just very rarely call them in. And I think in this deck, it's going to be even less likely, because I've got the infantry to fill that role. Helicopters. The Akula goes without saying. What I actually need to do is delete that and take two hardened. In fact, let's just delete them all and we'll start over and I'll explain as we go. So the Akula, two hardened. They're extremely good choppers. You could take one elite, but you know, if you lose one, then you don't get any more. So I'm gonna take two. When it comes to other choppers, I wouldn't bother with these down here. They're cheap and cheerful, but they're just, they're nothing special, are they, you know? The MI-28, very, very strong, but a little bit more expensive. The MI-24VP is probably the way I'd go and get hardened to those. The MI-24P, again, very good. The big difference here being the type of missile it gets. There's not a big price difference, but I'd take seven of those as well. I don't think there's many... Is there a benefit to taking the veterans? Probably not. The MI-24V has anti-air, so I'd definitely take some of those. Because there are going to be situations where you want to rush a point and need anti-chopper choppers, other than the Akula. Now you could switch these around a bit, so you've got them sort of in the order of price. And I've got points to play with. My air is full. Would I put anything anywhere else is the question. Probably not. So I might as well fill up the choppers. Is there any benefit to this? It's got an auto cannon. So yes, in that sense. Oh, I forgot. I bought two of those and only one of those. There we go. I'm going to take it. One of those for 90. One of those. And then this, because it's got an auto cannon, I'll take three of. Now I've still got a point left, but I can't take any more aircraft. 
What else can I take for a point? I really don't see any point in saving three points to spend there. There's nothing there. Recon. Hmm. Unless I was to take the... They can only come in the Ural. And my command infantry are coming in the Ural. I appreciate the fact they're cheap. Let's just stick something else in the helicopters. Do I go for something really pointless and cheap? No. It's not worth it. Could take another set of those. Loads of choppers. You see, the nice thing about this deck is technically I could use it in a game with more points. There will be so much debate on this one about what's good and what's bad. Now... I realized something yesterday. If the enemy have Tomcats, you're a bit unstuck if you've just got Yaks and SU-27s. Yaks are very good, and they're cheaper than the SU-27PUs. The SU-27PUs are also very good. So my solution was to put both of them in the deck. Two elite Yaks, and two elite SU-27PUs. This is so I can go pure air superiority fighter. No messing. Pure air superiority fighter. These two were doing an amazing job until I lost one of them. Because I overextended. And I've been doing being so careful until that point. But in the game I played with them, I scored like 1,400 points. Purely because of these two. And then when one of them died, one of these and a yak. They are devastating. The enemy team were being very careful with their planes as well. Hence, I didn't score more. I was having to play very carefully, and when I didn't play very carefully, I lost the 27PU. I also made the mistake of when I realized the enemy fighters were coming for me, not just engaging them. I tried to pull out, which was the stupidest thing to do. If you get in a situation where you're that close to the enemy fighters, you aren't going to pull out. Just go in and fight them, because at the end of the day, worst case scenario, you lose a plane and they lose a plane, or you all lose all your planes. But if you pull out, they're not going to lose anything, and you're going to lose your planes. Probably at least one of them. So, my bit of advice there, just engage. You forget in the heat of the battle. You do. It happens. It happens to me. It happened to me then. Okay, so that's your air superiority for the moment. We'll come back to that. Then your anti-ground unit, which is super expensive. TV guided missiles, fire and forgets. It's a very good jet, very good anti-tank, very expensive. But it also has four anti-air missiles, long range ones. So it can double up as an air superiority. I wouldn't particularly bring it in for that necessarily, but it doubles up as that. So you've got some flexibility there. And in, you know, a 10v10 low point game, that's an expensive unit to bring in. So to be able to have some air defense on it as well is quite nice. Then you've got the MiG 25BM for your seed plane. Can't go wrong with that. Again, it's quite expensive. There are cheaper options with lower range. But again, that's got me quite a few points in the game that I played yesterday. There's a lot of debate with this one, I think. The IL-102. Devastating in its bombing capacity. However, very slow and very easily shot at. But it has some armor to stop it getting killed. That said, it's expensive. And I'm actually going to remove it because yesterday when I was playing, I saw no reason to bring it in. I have this guy with cluster munitions, which I did bring in. Very useful, killing enemy CVs in the forest. And then I've got this one with 30 250 kilogram bombs. This is slowish, not too slow. And this will carp a bomb an area with amazing effect. So infantry, fantastic. 30 250 kilogram bombs, job done. We now have two points spare. And the question is, you could bring something else in for your anti-ground TV guided missiles you go with the SU-25T it's a little bit slow hmm. 
could go with a Yak, so you have some Napalm. The Yak 38M, so you have a few bombs. They're cheap, they're cheerful, they're slow, they're gonna die. I suppose as a... a if this was a high point game, I would potentially bring these in on a suicide mission and not care. But in a 10v10 tactical game, you're just not going to. Got the MiG-29s. You don't get many bombs with them. The nice thing about the 29M is you do get those Van Pale missiles again. The MiG-27s, you know, you've got all these nice anti-ground missiles. They're not too expensive. I mean, these two are pretty fast. That one does have fire and forget again. I'd be tempted for that one. Bringing in one elite, and hopefully you don't miss. Let's stick that in for now. Another anti-air. MiG-25 BM we've got. MiG-23s. Oh, close range air support, I wouldn't even bother. Clusters. T you only get two bombs, it's not worth it. Not worth it. I'll one or two. Ugh, depends on your point of view. I've got a point left, and I know exactly what I'm going to do with it. Where is my MiG 31s? This is that one where you're kind of like umming and ahhing to yourself of whether it's worth it. If you go up against Tomcats, and you have enough of these guys, you'll be alright. As long as you're willing to go near them. If you don't, then a Tomcat's going to outrange you and someone playing a US Airborne deck is going to have very good Tomcats. So, in that sense, you kind of need a MiG-31. I'm going to stick the MiG-31M back in for now. And if it came to a point where I felt like I was going up against Tomcats a lot that were killing these guys too much, then I would probably add in the MiG-31. Fine, I haven't took any navy in, but uh, I can do that later. This this is a deck designed for bringing in a couple of good expensive units more than anything else, and relying on your team to do other stuff, which I'm not used to doing. I usually like to have the flexibility to do everything, so this is me outside of my comfort zone a little bit. But we'll see, it might, it might work out well. So I'm going to leave the video there. Thanks very much for watching. I hope this was entertaining. If you have any suggestions for the deck or units that you would take or what your thoughts are on the MiG-31 and the MiG-31M because I know there's always a lot of debate about that, let me know in the comments down below. Either way, thanks for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe as always and I'll see you all soon for some more Wargame.